The second battle of Hoover Dam is the final act of New Vegas, and the game ends afterwards. However, Obsidian originally planned for the game to continue, and the Wasteland would react to the player's decisions in a plethora of ways. Josh Sawyer revealed why this was cut, stating, We always wanted to support post Hoover play. A few milestones prior to being content complete, it was obvious that we weren't going to be able to support it to the extent it deserved, robust reactivity to the choices the player made. Because we didn't have time to do it correctly, I made the decision to cut it. We did design post-game reactivity, we just didn't have time to implement it. We put a lot of effort into the ending slides. We know those slides are really popular with people, so we wanted to make sure there's a huge amount of variety and reactivity with that stuff. Initially, we talked about trying to support post-game play, but because the changes that can happen at the end of the game are pretty major, this is basically what it came down to. Either have the changes feel really major in the end slides, and then have them not be very major after the end of the game, or make them really minor and not that impactful. There's an unused quest called Viva Las Vegas that was intended for the postgame. It contains variables for each major faction, but it's otherwise empty. I suspect this would have been used behind the scenes, rather than there being new quests in the postgame. There are three other related quests, World Changes Post-Endgame, End States for the Strip, and Freeside Post-Endgame Content Quest. These would be used to alter the world according to the player's choices, but they're all also empty. The quest World Changes Post-Endgame is linked to some very interesting unfinished code. There's a note here that reads, This script is responsible for handling changes in the world according to any of the five possible endings. In essence, it should be used to enable and disable any references that must change given the outcome of Hoover Dam's battle. It mentions there being five endings, but only four endings were accounted for, NCR, Legion, Independent, and Mr. House. I'm not sure what the fifth ending could possibly be. Perhaps this was a typo and was meant to say four, or maybe there was another ending at one point, but there's no remnant of it. The script also has variables for all the locations and groups covered in the ending slides. Some areas like Novak and Vault 19 are missing their variables, and have a note that reads, We need to know these, as they don't appear in the document. So apparently not all locations had their design completed, but the majority did, and from their variables, it seems the postgame was going to mirror the ending slides. There's conflicting evidence to exactly how much time would have passed between the Hoover Dam battle and the postgame starting. The script V Ending Binks is an early version of the game's ending that used Bink video files like the intro video. Videos were much more time consuming to make, which is why the ending slides were used instead. This code was intriguingly written before the post game was cut, and after the video played, it would advance the end game time by a month. However, the lines for Radio New Vegas and other characters imply that very little time has passed since the battle. Intense fighting erupted on Hoover Dam as tensions between NCR and Caesar's Legion boiled over. Reports indicate that NCR forces emerged victorious and the Legion scattered amidst the defeat of its most feared military leader. Preliminary word is that Caesar's Legion has taken control of the dam and that the NCR presence in Nevada is severely crippled. While it initially appeared to be an NCR victory, we're receiving word that our own Mr. House may have been the one to secure the dam for himself. But in a shocking turn of events, the dam has been rendered useless, and both sides have taken heavy casualties. Neither faction appears to have won. But in a shocking turn of events, an army of Securitrons has seized control of the dam, preventing both sides from claiming it. Now, sources of the dam are telling us that the involvement of one key person appears to have heavily influenced the outcome. It's possible the time being advanced by a month was a placeholder. The code teleports the player to a marker called V Postgame Start Marker, which can still be found in front of the Boulder City Memorial, and it would also set the time of day to 7.40 in the morning. 
So the post game would have started a little after dawn, and the player would be looking at the memorial. The sun would be rising over the horizon in the background, which would have been a great moment. Perhaps if the NCR won, the memorial would be expanded to include soldiers who died during the second Hoover Dam battle. It's possible you only would have started at this location after a NCR victory, and would have been teleported to the Lucky 38 after a house or independent victory, or the fort for the Legion. Josh Sawyer elaborated on one of the potential changes to Boulder City in a form spring post. In the case of a Legion victory in which Caesar survives, I wanted the Boulder Memorial to be smashed to pieces with a fallout appropriate sculpture in its place of Caesar after Augustus of Prima Porta. A Legion victory would have led to some of the most significant world changes, particularly if Caesar died and the Legate came to power. For instance, a note in the Followers of the Apocalypse section of the End States Code reads, This one has an extra outcome in the case of a Legion victory. If Caesar is dead, they survive. Otherwise, they are massacred. Having the followers either driven out of the Old Mormon Fort or exterminated definitely would have been memorable. We almost certainly would have seen crucified and enslaved NPCs of varying factions in many locations. Settlements as far away from Legion territory as Novak, Camp Golf, and NCR Correctional Facility are attacked in the ending slides, so perhaps we would have seen them occupied or destroyed. Legion soldiers would also be found guarding Hoover Dam, and they have a cut line. Our victory was never in question. The Legion soldiers in other areas would have new lines as well. All that Kaiser promised has come true. Our way, amigas. Just as it's unclear how much time would have passed, it's also unclear how far the Legion would have advanced after winning. The Securitrons on the Strip have lines recorded for each major faction. Welcome to Vegas, capital of the sixth state of the new California Republic. Welcome to New Vegas, where a new day is dawning. Welcome to Vegas. Don't make trouble. True to Kaiser. That last line suggests the Legion conquered New Vegas after taking Hoover Dam, which lines up with their ending slides. However, some dialogue conflicts with this. Dazzle, one of the Gamora prostitutes, has a line that suggests the Legion hasn't reached the strip yet. I'm not letting the Legion make me a slave. Even I have standards. The Freeside locals have a similar line too. Why not just put the slave collars on us yourself, you bastard? With the Legion at the dam, it won't be long before they enslave us all. Mick has an unused line that implies the Legion has control of the dam, but haven't reached New Vegas yet. He has lines for the other outcomes as well. With Caesar's Legion in control of the dam, I think things are going to get much more difficult around here. And NCR wins. No, really, I'm shocked. I totally didn't expect the guys with advanced armor and seemingly unlimited ammunition to take down an army of machete-wielding ingrates. That old coot house is gonna make me rich. With all the new rules and regulations in New Vegas, I'll make a killing circumventing them. Independent Vegas. Never thought I'd see it. House may be gone, but the players remain the same. Business as usual, then. Most information points to the post-game mirroring the ending slides, though, so I suspect any conflicting lines were written and recorded before the main quest line had been finalized. Two of Veronica's lines illustrate this best. For some reason, it warms my heart that we fought for the kooky old geezer. Guess he reminds me of someone. Never sided with a group of marauders before, but I think the Brotherhood stands a better chance against them than they did against the NCR. That gives me some hope. They suggest the Brotherhood of Steel is still around after a Legion or House victory, but in the final game, the player is forced to destroy the Brotherhood if they support either faction. It seems that both of these lines would have been cut even if the post-game had been completed. There are some interesting differences between these two ending slides. In the Lady Player version, Wolpus and Colta is sporting blonde hair, like his Collector's Edition card. His hair would later be changed for whatever reason. The Dude version of the slide features a different lineup of characters, and Wolpus is missing entirely. During one of the Legion endings, Caesar mints a new coin to honor the player. 
Josh Sawyer revealed that he wanted to include this new currency, stating, In the olden days when we planned to support Pose 2 for play, I did want to introduce two new forms of currency in the event that players supported an NCR or Legion victory. A NCR $500 bell with either President Kimball or Chief Hanlon on it, depending on the ending, and something commemorating the courier on the back. Also a Legion double Arius worth 200 caps, commemorating the courier on the back and conquered General Oliver on the front, in the style of Vercingetorix on Roman coins following Julius Caesar's conquest of Gaul. After a Legion victory, the Legate mentions a reward that he'll speak to you about later. It's unknown what this would have been, but it seems there would have been some unique reward awaiting the player in the postgame. Tech Sergeant Reyes and Dr. Richards from Camp Forewarn Hope have cut postgame lines. With the Legion defeated, things are great now. You should have heard the cheers over the radio when news of the victory came back from the dam. Lots of confusion over the radio. Somehow the NCR lost the dam, but the Legion didn't get it either? I've been trying to sort out the rumors from the facts, but with the Legion coming, I guess it doesn't matter. The news is all bad. Reyes's line suggests the camp would have remained operational in the postgame if the player didn't complete the quest We Are Legion. If the player completed the quest, Cazadors would spawn, all of the NCR NPCs would be disabled, and a mass grave of soldiers would appear at the camp. During my interview with Charlie Staples, I ask him about it. If I recall correctly, those were originally intended to be a part of the postgame state. Originally, we wanted to allow players to continue playing after the end slides and actually see a lot of the reactivity mentioned in the end slides. Near the end of production, we didn't have much of the postgame content implemented and we didn't have enough time to do it right, so we decided to cut all the postgame content. I managed to block out the few things in Forlorn Hope as a test case, but ended up turning it off. I remember we wanted to have changes for pretty much every location, even if it was just minor things, but I don't recall anything specific anymore. Random FNV fact, Cazadors are drawn to dead bodies. This is mentioned in the All Roads comic, but it's never mentioned in game. Despite that, you can still see evidence of this behavior. This is why they appear at Tribal Village, at Bonnie Springs after killing the Vipers there, and it's also why they would have appeared here if they hadn't been cut. If the player supported the NCR, the Legion's presence in the Mojave likely would have been heavily reduced. Perhaps areas like the Fort, Cottonwood Cove, and the Legates Camp would be destroyed or controlled by NCR forces. Legion slaves have lines for NCR and House Victories though, so it seems they would have maintained some presence in the Wasteland even if they lost. The leader of New Vegas and his army of robots has defeated both the NCR and the Legion. What will happen now? There's talk that many of the ranking Legionaries will be beheaded for allowing the NCR to defeat the Legion yet again. Good Springs NCR ending mentions the town saw increased trade, but that the increased taxes drove out the old timers. Perhaps you would have found additional merchants there, but characters like Old Pete and Doc Mitchell would be gone. During the quest Silas treatment, the player interrogates a captured Centaurian, Silas. The quest is given by Lieutenant Boyd, and she has an unused line that would have played in the postgame if the player didn't complete it. No, I've got this one. I don't think he's gonna have much information of value, so I'm just tormenting him for fun. Thanks, though. This reveals that some quest would automatically fail at the start of the postgame if they hadn't been completed. Colonel Moore has post-game dialogue that can be erroneously accessed in the core game due to a bug. Surprisingly good. Our forces have managed to secure the region with little resistance, and trade should soon reach an all-time high. The Brass was particularly surprised by the lack of domestic threats in the area. They were prepared to spend months pacifying known troublemakers. When they found those threats absent, they turned to the man in charge of the area, but Shu being Shu, he denied having anything to do with it. So now the men have to answer to Brigadier General Moore, and both they and I have you to thank for it. We made a good team. I hope we can work together again in the future. I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. 
There's much to be done, but nothing for someone with your skills. You should take some time off. You've earned it. With their leader dead, the rest of their army retreated to the east. We've sent scouts to track them, but that's it. We don't have the forces or supplies necessary to chase them down. More's the pity. Still, I've sent a few skilled men out to make sure their journey is eventful. It should be a long time before they even think of returning. Quartermaster Barden at Hoover Dam offices has a line as well. He really saved our asses out there against the Legion. Thanks. The NCR troopers at Helios 1 and Camp McCarran also have cut dialogue. With the Legion defeated, things are great now. The attacks have stopped. Winning the dam saved our asses. The Legion's coming for us. Just a matter of time, believe you me. During one of the ending slides, Camp McCarran is conquered by the fiends. I have talked about the cut south gate that would have appeared between these towers, but recently a modder named Ludo discovered something fascinating. The cut gate still remains and is called Camp McCarran Main Gate. It's actually used in game, but strangely only at the Legate's camp of all places. These gears line up with grooves inside the gate that you can normally never see, and this suggests it was meant to have an opening animation. This in turn suggests that Camp McCarran was a part of the Wasteland world space instead of an interior cell. He also discovered this gate fits perfectly into the space between the towers. Having this gate open up to reveal a NCR military base would have been unforgettable, and it would have been one of the most visually impressive areas in the game. This footage is from Ludo's upcoming mod that restores the camp. It was so gracious of him to share this information and the mod for this video, so thank you so much dude. The base is shown at least once in early footage, and the tall fortified walls from the final game aren't present, but due to the distance and low resolution of the video, it's difficult to tell how it was fortified. From the concept art, it seems the walls were meant to be made from an assortment of salvaged junk. During the intro video, metal sniper towers from NCRCF can be seen here as well, but these were also cut. The area had noticeable frame rate drops in the base game, so it's easy to see why a grander version of the camp wasn't going to work. Regardless, the junk walls and gate would have made the fiends taking control of the base much more plausible than its final layout. It also would have been more aesthetically pleasing and would have made more sense considering considering it was originally an airport and not a military base. I can't help but suspect there were once plans for the player to open the gate and let the fiends inside the camp, but if so, there's no remnant of it. Most of the potential endings lead to the Brotherhood being destroyed or forced to retreat from their base in Hidden Valley. However, in one of the potential ending slides, the Brotherhood takes over Helios 1 and dialogue was even recorded for it. We will not lose this place again. Helios 1 is safe in our hands and our hands alone. Under NCR control, this place was a gun in the hands of a child. Fantastic has an unused line as well. I look so good in this shit. I want you to call me fucking spectacular from now on. If the player failed to stop the Omeritus plan to attack the Strip, Operation Racket, it likely would have changed the area in a notable way. The radio broadcast played on NCR emergency radio imply the NCR embassy was destroyed and that many were killed during the attack. What the fuck is happening on the Strip? I'm getting reports that someone just bombed the embassy. It sounds like the Omeritas are mounting some sort of attack on the Strip. The attack is coming from the Omeritas. They're using some kind of gas to kill everyone in the casinos on the Strip. How is this possible? The monorail at Camp McCarran just exploded. I'm not getting any reports of any fighting, but the monorail is gone for sure. We aren't going to be able to reinforce the Strip against the Omerita assault there. How the fuck did this happen? Jesus! Jake Irwin, a NCR soldier found at NCR Embassy, has a cut line with a condition for Operation Racket being successful. I can't believe it's gone. It's all gone. How the fuck did this happen? Between the embassy being destroyed, the monorail potentially being destroyed, and many of the NPCs on the Strip and casinos dead from the gas attack, it seems the Strip would have been almost unrecognizable. 
In an independent ending where the Securitrons weren't upgraded, there's heavy rioting on the Strip for weeks. Perhaps we would have seen Securitrons fighting rioters and the Strip damaged, though likely on a lesser scale than Operation Racket. After defeating the Legate, Yes Man mentions something interesting. I didn't want to make a big deal about this until after we won, but... Well, I found some code snippets in one of Mr. House's data banks that will let me, um, reprogram my personality to be a little more assertive, basically. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and it's going to take me a while, so it'll seem like I'm offline. But don't worry, everything will be okay. I've updated the Securitron's targeting parameters so they know what to do. Vegas will be protected, so that's where I'll be. Bob's making a few changes, and I... I guess I'll see you around. This seems to suggest that Yes Man wouldn't have been around after an independent ending, and it's possible the same would have been true for Caesar, the Legate, and Mr. House. If the player supported Mr. House, Securitrons would likely be found in new areas like Prem and Freeside. The Freeside locals even have lines for this, and seeing Securitrons patrolling the slum instead of the Kings would have been cool. Well, it looks like we won't have to worry about NCR or the Legion messing with us now. I just hope the Securitrons can keep the peace. Can't say I like all the tin cans shuffling around, but this new Securitron army shouldn't have much trouble keeping things safer around here. As if House didn't have enough control already. At least we don't have to deal with NCR or the Legion now. Jane has a line about Mr. House's victory. Presumably her cut counterpart Marilyn had a cut line like this too, but her dialogue was ripped out of the game, so there's no telling. D? Mr. House has everything well in hand. In many of the companion ending slides, they leave the wasteland or die, so it seems some companions would have become unavailable due to your choices. Perhaps if the player didn't complete Rex's companion quest to find him a replacement brain, he would have been dead after Hoover Dam. Lead producer Jason Bergman commented on how it would have been strange for companions to appear in the postgame. We tell the full story of every one of your companions through the end of their lives, and it's weird to do all of that and jump back and say, okay, now you can keep going again. During an interview with Eurogamer, Chris Avalone expanded on why the postgame was cut. The loss of postgame content was a big hit in many respects. It didn't feel like a compromise, it felt more like a surprise. Designing post-game content is not hard to do if you're keeping it in mind with each NPC and quest as you're designing it, like a karma check, faction check, or just another global reactivity check, which we had to do anyway. Sometimes all it needs is a post-game line, but if you haven't planned for it throughout your design process for your areas and characters, it can be a lot of work to go back and add later on. And while some designers had planned for it, for example, our lead writer had lines for Mr. House in place for post-game reactivity and strip Securitrons. Not all areas had post-game design work. Most of the focus was on how we can make this work after Hoover Dam, which wasn't an easy question to answer in each instance, especially with the existing amount of bugs, particularly optimization issues, and the fact that lack of reactivity in faction-controlled territories required a good investment of time to make them feel minimally correct. When we were doing the DLCs for New Vegas, we began to look into if there was a way we could continue the player's gameplay after Hoover Dam. The core game already had a lot of crashes and bugs, and was already being extensively patched during the DLC, so even if we implemented it, we doubted we could address any bugs that resulted from the change. We did examine all the logistic impacts of doing post-game content with limited resources, but it was clear we'd be putting the already shaky game stability at risk by creating a post-Hoover Dam option, even even in a minimal fashion. The most we could manage was level scaling for key enemies like the Legate, with the introduction of the new level caps in the DLCs. Since the additional levels made the previous boss fights too easy for the player, 
That said, we did look at potential minor additions where we could, including a reserved save game slot before Hoover Dam, which we were able to do, and looking into adding Ulysses as a companion you could take back into the main game from the DLC. But an evaluation of that revealed it would likely break a number of scripts, companion weapon removal, teleportation scripts, and even scripts for the other DLCs that automatically remove companions from your party. I even offered to pay for one of the milestones myself to allow for additional polish time on existing content, but that was refused because they didn't want to extend the release date for the DLCs. I could theorize about the other endings all day, but it would be little more than speculation. New Vegas had masterful narrative design, so the loss of the post-game is heartbreaking. It would have been so dope to experience the effects of your choices, rather than being told about them. In the end, cutting it was also the right decision. Changes in so many locations, even minor ones, would have taken a massive amount of work and months to implement properly. While it's no post-game state, the ending slides do an excellent job at closing out the game, and they really bring back an old-school fall vibe. The functional post-game ending mod by Kazopert restores the post-game, and it does an excellent job filling in the gaps, considering that not much is left over. If you want to check it out, there's a link below in the description. Unfortunately, it's impossible to restore the post-game the way it was meant to be. The ending slides and the little dialogue that was recorded only cover a small number of areas and characters, so it's like trying to put together a complex puzzle and you're missing most of the pieces. These changes would have made FNV into an even better game. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.